Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make a cheesy potato bake. So what you see on my counter is what we're going to use to make this. And you can see there's not really a lot of ingredients. You have some potatoes, some blocks of cheese, and just a few things like milk and flour and seasoning and butter and a big bowl of water. And if you're wondering, why is there a big bowl of water there? Because when we actually peel our potatoes and slice them to get them ready to go into the bake, and we want them to go in the water and let them sit for a little while because for one that's going to stop them from turning colors but it's also going to actually keep them to a point to where the starch comes out and we actually when we dry these off we're going to get rid of a lot of that starch and it's going to be so much better when we bake these it'll just have a better end result but everything you see here is what we're using i have two kinds of cheese here you basically need about 16 ounces of cheese and you can do this however you want because I'm using mozzarella and some mild cheddar. You could change that if you want to. So I have peeled some potato here. And as you can see, I'm just slicing these across at a decent thickness. I'm not trying to go overly thick. I'm not trying to make them like, you know, paper thin either. I'm just trying to get a good slice going on these to where they're just a good bite when you're going to bite into them. Because you don't want like thick, thick pieces for what we're about to do. So we're basically just going to slice them all. And when they end up in the bowl, they'll look a lot like this. And then we're going to set this to the side because we want it to sit, like I said, to get the starch out. But they're protected. Nothing's going to happen to them until we get back to them. And that's the best thing. So um, when we go to do the cheese here, I do not suggest getting a bag of shredded cheese because that stuff is low moisture and it doesn't melt well. So if you get a block, you're getting so much better of a deal out of this because it will melt really well and it will do what you need it to do, especially since we're trying to make a cheese sauce. So I have my two blocks here. They're eight ounces a piece and I'm going to shred them and I'm just going to go through them one at a time. Now, I warn you, if you're doing mozzarella, it does have a tendency to break into pieces as you're doing it, but you do need to shred these um, and you know, you can always pull that piece back later and shred it again. Um, you'll have better luck when you're going for the cheddar because that's easier to shred because it has a little bit more thicker consistency to it. So what we're trying to do here is basically just shred this into thin pieces because that's going to melt better when we actually go to put this in our pan to cook it. We just really want to make sure that we don't have huge hunks of cheese going into this because it's going to take a very long time for that to melt. So go ahead, shred it all through. And when you're done with this, you know, you're gonna have a pile of shredded cheese, which is basically somewhere in the neighborhood of a couple of cups worth of cheese. And that's what we need for this. But see what I said with the cheddar, it just shreds a lot faster, a lot easier. It just goes straight through. And that's the best thing. Now, I like I said, I'm using a mild cheddar. You could actually go for sharp or a medium or whatever you wanna do. And that's great. But this is what it looks like when you get all this cheese done. So you're gonna need a large skillet. And to that, we're adding four tablespoons of butter. And then I'm gonna add just about a tablespoon of olive oil to it. Because one, it gives a little flavor, but two, it's gonna help melt the butter and get going on the next steps that we wanna do. So go ahead and get your butter completely melted because we are medium high heat at this point. We wanna get this completely melted down. And then once it's down, you're gonna need some all purpose flour for this because I add into this anywhere from three to four tablespoons. Um, you probably are safe with about three, but you can go for if you want it a little thicker. And we're just gonna mix this through because what we're trying to do is basically mix the butter and the oil into the flour and actually kind of make it a pasty thing. And then as it's warming up and doing its deal, it's gonna start sizzling and it's gonna start becoming a little bit more wet. And then we're gonna be ready to add our next ingredients to this. So go ahead and do this for about two minutes because we wanna cook out that flour taste. We don't want that ending up in with everything else we have in our pan. So go ahead and get it to that point. And then we're gonna add just a little milk to it so that way we can break it up. Now you're gonna need two cups of milk to use in this and we're not talking skim, you need whole milk. Um, and go ahead and mix this until you incorporate everything into the milk that's going in. So all that flour and everything is just gonna work its way in. Now, mind you, in the meantime, you do need to preheat your oven to about 375 degrees because this is gonna cook for about an hour. So get it heating up. And we're gonna continue to add milk to this and continue to break up the bits that are in there of the flour and everything else and just keep working it. 
until you actually get a good mix going on here and then we're going to keep adding our milk to it until we've used all of our milk so you know you could add in your milk like maybe four times or so as you're doing this you know just along the way to keep mixing this up because sometimes it's easier to mix when there's less milk in it to actually incorporate you know the flour and everything in but once you got your two cups of milk in there you're just going to keep mixing it up until everything goes through and it starts to thicken and it's going to get kind of silky like this is here and it's going to thicken up quite a lot and then when you get to that point where you think it's thickened up and it feels like it's thickened up we're going to add some seasoning to this so we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt a half a teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of paprika excuse me and then we're going to mix this up until all of the seasoning is totally mixed through and make sure everything is totally incorporated you don't have too much seasoning laying around in one place or the other and then once it's hot enough and it's boiling like this we are going to add our cheese to it because we want a little bit of a rolling boil going on the bottom of that and as you stir the cheese it's going to start to melt in and that's the best thing about having that really thinly shredded cheese it's actually going to melt a lot faster than if you put in cubes or hunks or whatever so as it goes just keep mixing this until all your cheese is broken up and the color of what's in your pan is going to change and it's going to be kind of the cheddarish effect there because it's going to change it more yellowish than it was when you started and just make sure you don't have any lumps anywhere and you're going to cook this for you know a couple minutes or so until that cheese is really melted so keep going for that until you're to that point and then when you notice that everything is done everything is melted we're going to move on to the next step so now we're going to take our potatoes and put them onto a platter which we line with a paper towel because we want to soak up that water that's coating them from the bowl and we just want to go ahead and take them lay them out as much as we can if you need to get some paper towels dab on top of them to get that water off of them because we want them dry when they're going into our baking dish um, and I'm going to use a dish that is like, I think eight and a half by 11 or something like that in size. Um, you need something kind of on the large side, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. It is your friend. Make sure these don't set up shop. And then we're going to actually layer across the bottom of this pan, a bunch of these potatoes. Now we're not using them all because we're going to do two layers. So we're going to put in potatoes, cover the bottom, put on some of the cheese sauce, bring more potatoes in, and then put the rest of the cheese sauce on top. So go ahead and just bring them in and space them out however you want to. Um, I just stack mine a little bit like this because that way, you know, I'm coating the bottom. So go ahead and work your way through this until you get it completely covered. But just save enough for another layer on top of it. So you're going to use, you know, almost half of them on the bottom. And then once they're there, we're going to spoon in this cheese sauce to make sure that the potatoes are completely covered. And we do a whole layer of this to make sure it's all the way across the bottom. And then once that's in place, then we're going to go ahead and add in more potatoes on top of this and then more cheese sauce on top of that. And that's just the way it's going to get stacked up. And then, like I said, if you hadn't done it already, you need to preheat your oven or have it hot enough at 375 degrees for this to go into. Because I suggest baking this for at least an hour because we want to make sure that there's time for these potatoes to get cooked and you know an hour's time should do really well for them and like i said once you got those potatoes in there you take the rest of your cheese sauce put it over top of it and then after that now this is an optional thing you can do it or you don't have to do it it's up to you but you can add some parmesan cheese across the top of your cheese sauce and this is going to give it like a little crustiness on the outside with a little bit of a bite of parmesan if you don't like parmesan don't use it but it does have a good taste either way you want to do it but as I said, this will be going in the oven for at least an hour and it'll come back looking something like this. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, check out the Southern Mountain Kitchen website where you can get a free recipe. Check out the cookbooks available from the Southern Mountain Kitchen. And if you'd like to, you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than Amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than Amazon. So if you get a chance, check it out. And I hope you have a great day.